Welcome, The Melanated Way. I'm your host, Linda Antwi. In conjunction with Master of Blackjack, we are continuing our Seeking Sister Wife series. We're all like, what has happened? Well, today we have an amazing show for you. We have Sydney and Natasha from season three of Seeking Sister Wife. Let's pop them right up on the stream here. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Thank you so much for doing this. We're super excited. And I want to just kind of jump right in um, and start from the beginning. So I binge watched the whole for third season. And I got to tell you, I have lots of questions. So I want to start from the beginning with you guys, because I think that my questions are our viewers' questions and your fans' questions. So can we take it back to the very, very beginning, Sidian? So I heard and I wrote a note. So you had an original sister wife that left you guys four years ago. Right. Okay. Can we can well, we talk like a little five years, but yeah. Five years ago. Okay. Can we talk a little bit about how that whole situation happened and how you two handled that situation? Sure. Um, so uh, you know, she I I can't I can't give a whole lot of details on on the situation, but um uh, she had agreed to to have Tasha uh, in our relationship, and um, at the end of it, basically decided that it, it wasn't going to work for her. Okay. And um, Tasha stepped out of of the whole scenario to to give me and and the and the the first wife, we'll say, um, some time to to figure things out. And um, oh wow. That, yeah, during that time, things were not figured out, basically. And, um, you know, slowly Tasha kind of be, uh, began to come back around again and help out with things around the house and things like that. So, you know, we, we ended up getting back together. Now, Tasha, can you talk to me a little bit about if it's different being wife number one versus wife number two? Has that experience been different for you? It's a little different, I think, in ways that I had experienced coming in as a second. So I think I'm just a little more aware of like uh, somebody else's concerns coming into an established relationship because I had all those questions and concerns and um, ha ha what's appropriate to parent the kids and and how do you communicate. So I think it just gives me a lot more understanding and empathy. And so I try to ad address things before they're ever a worry for uh, a different sister wife. So. Now, can we talk a little bit about the polygamous poly lifestyle or plural lifestyle? Um, did you always know, and I'll start with you, Tasha, as well, because, you know, from the female perspective, we all have all the questions. Did you always know that you were open to living that lifestyle? I didn't know necessarily, but I, I don't know. I've just always been an open person. And mm -hmm. once I found it, it, it fit. And I was like, yeah, that's that's something I'm interested in. And what makes it fit for you? I think it's just that it's a little different dynamic and that, um, I don't know, there's like more love and support. And I really like the experience of having that communication uh, with another woman. Now, uh, Sidian, let's just talk a little bit because I've noticed with the show, Every family is slightly different. So tell me what it is you're looking for for your family and your situation. Um, so one thing is I, I try not to get too specific because, I mean, I think if, if you're out there dating, um, you don't want to nail down like, here's every little detail I want in, in a person, right? Because But you must have a type. You two must have a type. I mean, sort of, in, in like a, a really broad sense. Um, uh, I think that somebody who is very already kind of like happy with themselves, they're, um, they're self-empowered, they have uh, their own goals and dreams. Um, mm -hmm. I think that sort of thing is important. And somebody uh, maybe a little bit entrepreneurial, like they, they wouldn't mind, you know, if, if we want to help them 
get their own business going and, mm. and things like that. Like we love doing stuff like that. We put together websites and mm -hmm. e-commerce stuff and, and things like that. So we want to help somebody else like we do ourselves. We like um, empowered women. Yeah. Okay. And supporting them. So they have to be an individual. Yeah. Not, not somebody who wants to be like, you know, ordered around and told what to do or something like that. I, I want the opposite of that. So is it more like a, a collaboration? Oh, because yeah. I've talked to some of your other castmates and I think that for them, it's, it's more of a, um, it's like a tribe. One person said that it was a tribe. Yeah. Um, another person said that it was really just about like a community. So uh -huh. for you, are you saying it's more of a collaboration between you and your sister? Yeah, the yeah wife? I would say so. In a, I, I think that, you know, some of the other families might be more um, sort of a classic patriarchal sort of structure. And I think that that works for, for some families. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if everybody's in agreement on that sort of thing, then, you know, that they're all consenting adults, why not? Um, but for us, uh, we really like to keep everybody on, on exactly the same level. We all have as much say as one another. Nobody goes and makes big decisions without talking to the rest of the family. And, and I noticed that with you guys in your season is that you both really considered each other's feelings um, and consulted with each other on basically everything, which I thought was really quite nice to see. Um, the only thing that I was, and I'm still confused about, so maybe you guys can explain it to me. So um, the pandemic really changed things, right? So it changed mm -hmm. things. You were home a lot. And I do want to talk about some of the people that you dated, but for right now, you go and look first, city and for someone that you're attracted to, and then you bring Tasha in to see if she will get along with that potential sister wife. Is that how it works? Uh, not, not quite exactly. So um, I tend to just try and feel out the situation um, because these these women that I meet, I mean, they're all different and. Some of them, they, they want to talk to Tasha right away. Um, and so I will try and facilitate that. I'll come back to Tasha and I'll say, hey, you know, it's really important to this person that they get your take on everything. They have questions for you. Um, other people, they, um, I guess they are a little more trusting or something. And um, they, they say, you know, whatever is, whatever works for me or, or us as a couple in terms of bringing that person in. So I, I just feel out the situation and see what works for them. Okay, so so but what does that look like? So you're on a dating website. Is it just like a regular, you know, dating.com type website? And yeah, then I mean, all, all the normal dating kind of places you would assume, but and then, also hopefully meeting people like through friends or events yeah. and things like that. Cause there's okay. been some times where I was like, hey, I have a friend who's interested in dating you. And so I'd introduce them and have the first introduction and whether or not that works out is up to them. But <laughs> yeah. so we're just very natural with it and whatever kind of comes our way. Um, and if it seems like a good fit, we'll pursue. Okay. Okay. That, that makes it. And how hard or how easy has it been to find potential sister wives? It's pretty tough. I, yeah, I think it's a difficult um, ask of somebody to be open to kind of trying to integrate with a family. I think that's like a big ask. Mm -hmm. And and then it's just also not super socially normal right now. Um, so I think there's a little stigma and fear of like maybe how their family will accept it or not. And so it just gets a little more difficult the more niche your relationship type is. Yeah. Um, but we've had so many nice kind of people uh, reach out to us and so. That's and being on the show, has that opened up the wealth of potential sister wives for you? It, it's interesting, yeah. I think since being on the show, there's, there's a lot of people reaching out. Um, but we actually kind of have something going. So we, we kindly um, letting them know we're pursuing something. And if that doesn't work out, then maybe we'll circle back. But I see a big smile on your face. So it looks like it's going well. That's good. I don't think it's awful, but we're keeping it pretty. We don't want to spoil nothing for nobody. <laughs> yeah. All, all we can say is that there's a, there's a special somebody that, that we have our eyes on at, at this time. So. Oh, yay. That, that's wonderful. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, because I did a little bit of research. What do you guys think? 
what percentage of the population do you think is open to a uh, plural lifestyle? What percentage do we think are open to it? Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, I would say of, I guess, specifically the female population, because that's what we're looking for. Maybe only like 15 or 20, 15 to 25 percent. I would like say 20 percent of the population might practice plural lifestyles, but I don't think all the 20 percent is open well, about the, that. It's a little more nuanced, too. Or maybe because it's like one percent and we're off and we just know a lot of people in our space. It's 20 percent. 20. Oh, wow. yes, it's 20 percent that really like say that. that they are open to at least exploring a plural lifestyle. Huh. You're the first person, Tasha, to actually get that percentage correct in our interview series. I, I do some hey, research. Yeah, it was, on it, the it was within my range. I was, <laughs> was it though? I said 15 to 25. It was right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I get some partial credit. Partial. She gets 100% credit because she got it. She nailed it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how faith if it does play a role in your relationship and how, and if it does, what role does it play? Yeah, we're not religious at all. Um, uh, I mean, I guess you could say we're, we're spiritual and, and I can't, I can't speak so much for Tasha, but um, if you did have to give a label to my own sort of, if you wanted to call it a faith, it'd be pantheism. Okay. Uh, the, the idea that everything is, is God, including mm -hmm. the, people, animals, the earth, whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really consider it a religion, but you know, yeah. I guess technically it, it would be. Yeah. And for you, Tasha? Yeah. So at the moment it's just kind of undefined. I relate a lot with Sidian and the pantheism, but for me, I haven't quite, I, I don't identify as anything and we've always been open if this sister wife wanted to practice her own religion mm -hmm. she's absolutely welcome to do that and um you know when it comes to raising children in that it would just become a discussion of what's important there that was my next question great so let's talk a little bit about your experience on the show uh we had you dating alina who was a business owner and all of that and then the pandemic kind of changed that situation are you still friends or in contact with her yeah, she's a very sweet uh, woman. We've relocated from the area, so we can't get together or anything like that. But it's exciting to see some of her business stuff get off the ground and just kind of know where she was back when we had met her mm -hmm. and um, very much on, on friendly terms with her. Now, we kind of were left hanging with uh, Alexandra mm -hmm. in that whole situation. Can we speak a little bit about that? Because, you know, there is talk that there might be a fourth season. And I'll ask you guys later if, if you would be open to joining the fourth season, if that was the case. But let's talk about Alexandra and what's happened there because we all have been left like in the lurch. What's what's the uh, what's the cliffhanger for everybody? Well, what what are you still talking to her? Mm. Were you surprised that she kind of almost did like a 360 in her dealings with you. Um, I personally thought, you know, when she was like in the wilderness and talking to you that she seemed like she was gonna be super open. The only mm -hmm. question was gonna be about children and, and how she felt about children. But to me, after you guys had your date, it kind of went from zero to 360 and she was having all of these feelings. I don't know if it's because um, you guys went and saw the psychic and the psychic talked about three kids and you're getting married tomorrow. And, and it was That's my favorite thing. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, so I think with Alexandra, um, and I pronounce her name like that. And um, I don't know, there was some miscommunication about her. She told me the actual pronunciation is, uh, I think, Alejandra. Oh. So, and and the, the sort of Americanized version, uh, I, I guess I came up with Alexandra. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but now I get so much flack across the internet. Now they're like, oh, Sidian thinks he's so posh. He pronounces it Alexandra. Oh my God, because that's what I've been saying too. There yeah. is no <laughs> clarification. Sidian, that is not your fault. I, I it was funny. I you know. thought it was funny. We give so, them crap about it. <laughs> I just call it that from now on, whatever. Uh, so anyway, um, 
she, you know, I think with her, it was just that she wanted to explore. And um, she's a really adventurous kind of spirit. Um, she wants to be an adventure tour guide, uh, adventure guide, and, and take people on these awesome wild adventures. And mm -hmm. I think that really fits her personality that she's she's out there, she wants to experience life. She wants to determine if, if she hasn't done something, she wants to test it out and see what's going on there. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, she decided it wasn't for her, at least not at this time. And um, that's fine, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's fine for me. I, I enjoyed her company and everything, so. Yeah, and I think for some viewers, I think they saw some like red flags or things not fitting, and and we definitely saw those things too and acknowledged them. But she was always expressing interest in, in maybe exploring it or or seeing where she landed on some of the subjects like children or things like that. And I think what it came down to was where we weren't as open and free as she was in mm. some ways. And so it just didn't fit in yeah. those ways. I think but, it would have tied her down a little more than she wanted. Yeah. And I think when, totally when you're saying fine. red flags too, it's not like anything about like her personality or something. No. She's, she's a wonderful person. Um, it's just things that, that may didn't not fit with, yeah, didn't yeah. fit with our, our family dynamic, like mm -hmm. having to be tied down kind of. Yeah, no, and I'm, I listen, since this show, I've been doing all my research because I have all the questions. I think that with each family, what it comes down to is, is what's important, mm -hmm. right, to the family. So whether that is travel, if that's faith or religion or children yeah. or business. It Those has dynamics, to, they're always different. It's always different, right. So the first thing you have to get down is what's important. Right. So if it's not important to this person, then it's going to be hard for them to fit into the whole lifestyle. Totally understand that. So what I want to do right now is take it back a little bit because I didn't ask you, Sidian, how long have you been practicing the plural lifestyle and what got you interested in and in, in deciding to, the, to live the lifestyle? Yeah, um, I think there was there was two major things involved in that. Um, as far as how long I've been involved with it. It's kind of hard to say. Um, it's been kind of an off and on thing for over 10 years. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, two major things. One is um, I, uh, I know a guy, uh, Christopher Ryan, he's an author of this great book called Sex at Dawn. Mm -hmm. And um, he is a big advocate that the humans have been practicing um, plural relationship lifestyles for most of our evolution. And so um, he, he wrote this book and it's got a whole lot of scientific backing and, and great theories on, on all of that. And um, I think that was somewhat influential for me, but, but at the same time, that didn't get me to go like, Oh, well, I'm going to go out into the world and do this or something. Um, it actually, it just, it just happened. Um, I had been, I, I, I went to go on a date with somebody that uh, I'd found on a, a dating site and, um, they actually brought along their, their best friend at the time. And I, I didn't know they were, they were going to do this. And, um, so we all just hung out and, uh, you know, then, you know, they wanted to like see a movie and things like this, things progressed. And I ended up dating both of them for a while. And, I, I realized that, you know, I think that from from a, from a, a perspective, when when you haven't done this sort of thing, and especially when you are a male or you're looking at a male doing this sort of thing, the the immediate thing to think about is sex, and it's like, you know, oh, it must it must be all about that, and that's why it's, you know, they think it's so great or whatever. But when you actually do it, you realize uh, how much more it is about so many other things mm. that um the psychology of it the dynamic of it the the whole relationship the the feelings uh, the way that it plays out it's um it's it's entirely different than than you would imagine and you can't know until you've actually been there and done it so a lot of the uh, other couples have said something very similar to that um and so my question to you is on the show for people that don't know, and this is like their first experience with the plural lifestyle, 
some people think that, oh, it is all about the guy and the guy gets to have like all the wives and what do the wives get out of it? How would you respond to that? I would say that they're very sexually focused people, um, which, you know, I'm sure that's kind of a 180 uh, for them to think about that, but because they're trying to say that that's what we are, right? Mm -hmm. that's what the men are in this relationship. But I would say, get your mind out of the gutter, basically, <laughs> because um, because uh, they're they're putting their own ideas of and this. belief systems in, in yeah into our relationship when that's not at all what our relationship is about. If if our relationship was all completely sexually based, it wouldn't work. Uh, no, I don't think any good relationship works that way. It, you right. know, that's not a healthy way to be. It's, it's not healthy to be focused on any one thing in a relationship. It's gotta be about lots of things. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be well-rounded, right? Tasha, how would you respond to some viewers thinking that? Yeah, I, I would be very much in line with that of get your mind out of the gutter. And and of course, they have sex as part of a relationship, um, but that's not the bulk of the relationship. And yeah, if it, it was, I imagine it would be very short lived just because you you have to come and show up and be part of the family and, yeah, you and show communicate. Up. And, and it's not about a pros and cons list, like what do I get out of it or what does Sidian get out of it? Nobody really does that about monogamy and such they don't say well the pros and cons of getting a husband <laughs> right right <laughs> your relationship preference that makes sense now i want to ask you guys what was what do you guys feel is the biggest misconception from the show that people have about you two um so one thing i was actually just thinking of is that uh there's another thing people say about the the man it, it's very patriarchal all the time and that the women are being kind of manipulated and controlled and that sort of thing but i would also flip that kind of on its head because i mean there there are two or more women involved um who you know they they have each other if, if you want to think about it as a dynamic of like oh men versus women and who's got the most power and that sort of thing well, there's more women than there are men in the relationship. So right. I, how are you saying that, uh, you know, the man is has got like all this power over them and, and that sort of thing? There's more of them. <laughs> you know, if, <laughs> if, he, if you're looking at it from that perspective, it, I don't think it adds You're outnumbered. Up. Yeah, you're outnumbered. So yeah. if, if the ladies want something to be a certain way and they really want they to push the that, they, they're going to win the vote. So <laughs> Democracy. Yes. So, so you would say that the biggest misconception is that people are feeling in your relationship that it was very like a patriarchy. That was the biggest misconception from the I, show? I think I might say, yeah, that that, that is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, Same I, for you? I, I, well, I and you know, maybe for some other families that might be true. Um, I, I can't speak for every family. And um, I think definitely there's been, uh, you know, history and stuff that, that can show that it can definitely be abused um, depending on how people are involving themselves in this sort of thing. Right. Yeah, but that could also be in any relationship, right? Uh, yeah. And, and it doesn't have to be a plural relationship. If it's not a good relationship, it's yeah. not a good relationship. I don't see how it really changes much when you when you add more women to the situation. If, if, if a man is going to be um, manipulative and abusive and things like that in, in any relationship, then he's going to be like that in polygamy. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how the pandemic and that stay at home order has changed and if it's changed, how you view dating. Hmm. I'm not sure it has for me necessarily. I think it's given great perspective on like my strengths and weaknesses as a mother um, because I'm not a fantastic stay-at-home teacher. Uh, I very much appreciate the staff that helps with that. Um, so I think it was more of just a personal reflection and it made dating a little more difficult. Um, and I, I think it only highlighted perhaps the, the trust you have with a new person because you had to trust them like because um, there were some health problems in our household. So you had to trust them to 
um, wear a mask or who they were in contact with and what they were saying. So yeah. if anything, it was just the trust of accepting a somebody new into the home. That makes sense. Now, for a lot of the families, um, I'm finding that growing the family is a priority. Um, is that a priority for you guys, not just with the sister wives, but with children as well? Yeah, a lot of the uh, polygamous families are, are very baby centric. Um, mm -hmm. We're not. Uh, okay. I like to say we're we're dreams dreams and goals centric or focused. Um, so for us, uh, if you know, if we were to build around one central concept, aside from having a nice family and everything, is it um, entrepreneurship and getting ahead in life, um, getting to a point where we're not, you know, we don't have to worry about our our dream projects taking off and that sort of thing yeah fulfillment same, and respect. so same for you same answer tasha that so it's more about your dreams and fulfillment and less about um having like a huge tribe of children yeah i think i think it's more about the individual and kind of communal experience not necessarily like children if a sister wife wants children of course that's her choice um and her and Sidian can kind of discuss it and we can all plan together but for the most part, we want to, like, if she wants to travel, we'll support travel or build a business or whatever it is. But I think a lot of times parents get lost in the parenting and it's really mm. important to be there and show up. But it's also important to be an in individual. So I think it's important for a sister wife that comes in to be herself and find herself necessarily before having lots of children and experience that alone time with Sidian as well. So. I think her being her and if children's in her path, we'll totally support that. That makes sense. Now, how did you guys get involved with the show? Like, how, what did that process look like? Did you see it in like a casting and you're like, oh, this looks interesting. Let's share our, our path and journey with the world. It was kind of funny. Um, a casting director had messaged me because I'm in like polygamy support groups and things like that. And so he reached out to think, you know, doing his job. And I thought it was a scam. <laughs> so I, I showed Sidian the message and I was like, this seems like a scam. And Sidian thought it was like adult content or something. <laughs> he's, he's like, uh, I want to do a film interview with you and I, I can't yeah. tell you what it's about. Yeah. And I'm like, who's this, who's this strange man? Asking my wife to do this like private interview or whatever. Right. But we had looked, I looked at his profile and I was like, no, he actually seems like a real casting director yeah. for like real programs. And then it, it was just so fast. It was just um, interviews. Then we're going to do an interview. Contracts. They love you. We're going to do contracts. So we. And the guy uh, that we met, um, he's, he's awesome. He's fantastic. He's though. really nice. Cool. Nice. So we weighed the pros and cons and I think putting the story out there and normalizing plural relationships was important to us. And so that was the draw. And, you know, some people are going to be negative regardless and nobody's ever going to like you always, but that kind of stuff, we know we're strong enough people that it doesn't matter at the end of the day and we'll shelter our children. From what was the biggest uh, surprise being on the show for you? Like fan reaction, seeing seeing the editing or seeing your face all over the place like what was the biggest surprise for you individually and also as a couple for me i think it was just the, the like how many people came out of the woodworks that used to know in high school or things like that <laughs> supportive or not it was just kind of interesting that people would be like oh my gosh i never thought you would do this thing and i never <laughs> thought i would do a program like that either so um, it was just interesting to see so many people come out and so many kind people came out and supported us and, you know, because there's a lot of hate, but plenty of people being very nice. So that was surprising. Yeah, for me, it was um, the the amount that people will take at face value yeah. and and make their own assumptions. <laughs> yes. Um, people's assumptions and the telephone game that they play with that information uh there's there's so many people out there on the internet that um it's like they fancy themselves as these uh private investigators or something. <laughs> and they they get some like piece of information and they just run with it uh and by the by the end of the telephone game it's like um i had found out from from this is a real story from somebody online that apparently my dead grandfather was actually still alive 
and uh, had become a fugitive and was running from like the FBI and was caught at the border of Mexico. And I was like, this is news to me. Right. Uh, <laughs> that that is huge news uh I, I will have to share that with my family thank you so it, it's amazing yeah. how many uh amateur internet sleuths are out there i always yeah. say you know you have so much time to like sleep things you might want to take an extra like five ten minutes and actually research yeah. because yeah. those are two different things right They're I, too. some of those people are like basically stalkery kind of people. Oh yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we're like, we're like Z list. I mean, you, you have to like invent new letters of the alphabet to, to list what kind of celebrity we would yeah. be. <laughs> um, but you guys know reality TV is its own genre, right? And so the people that watch reality TV, they of... have a <laughs> zest for it. Yeah. Right. And, um, I think especially with the network that you guys are on as well, the fans are, are fans and they take it really, everything is very personal. They and take it to heart, yeah. They take it to heart. And because you're on this- I kind of don't. Pardon? I feel kind of bad because I don't. So. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They, some of them take it more seriously than the cast members. And yeah. they feel like they know you. They feel like you're their besties. And, you know, they take it I mean, very, very personal. Are, kind and and loving and stuff like that like i i do connect with them like i i feel a personal like connection and sometimes uh, i've i've made real friendships with some of these people mm -hmm. um those ones are are great it's just mm -hmm. you know, the other side of the equation right is, which i think there always be right yeah um okay so let's talk a little bit about uh what's next for you what do you what have you been doing since your season ended and what's next for you i got a haircut i see that <laughs> fancy <laughs> i didn't do the eyeliner today though sorry no i think it's a good look i think you can switch it up and it's a good look right yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking like lipstick and blush next time for next season or... okay a little bit and the, re and the reason being reason being yeah Oh, just to mess with people. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And is it going to be like a like a is rouge, or is it going to be more like a gloss? Oh, I, I was thinking like full goth, like black lipstick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll it's look a, for that. You know. And a will that be dazzle, dazzle in your life? <laughs> a razzle dazzle. Yeah. Is that the the name of your makeup line? Yeah. <laughs> It's my, my lookbook. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be all razzle-dazzle. Razzle. And the show hands. But uh, as far as what's changed uh, since then, um, we have been, I've been really uh, just putting my nose to the grindstone on uh, the My Mythos project. That's my personal mythology, our, our personal mythology project. Yeah. And um, we love it. It's just, it's it involves so much imagination and kind of romanticizing of your life, but in a very practical way. So that's mymythos.org if anybody wants to check. Tell us a little bit more about it since you have, you've mentioned it. I'm not exactly clear. So is it, is it a book? Like, what is it? It's, um, so personal mythology is working with your life stories. Okay. So, I mean, your life stories, they define everything about you, right? I mean, your, mm -hmm. your beliefs, your rules for your life, your values, your fears, all that kind of stuff every one of those things has a story behind it. And so, um, you know, a lot of self-help books, they'll, they'll talk to you about like, here's how to overcome a fear of this. Here's how to have confidence in that. But what they don't get to is the roots of like, how did you actually get there? Um, so that's what personal mythology does. It gets to the roots of things. And um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic because you end up finding out all these like really metaphorical things about your personality that, you know, for instance, uh, each of us plays a role in our life of like, sometimes you feel like the warrior, sometimes you feel like the explorer, sometimes um, you feel like the tiger, sometimes you feel like the puppy. Mm. Um, my oldest calls me puppy, so I, <laughs> I have that very integrated into my personality now. Nice. But, and so uh, it's a website? Yeah, mymythos.org. And okay. uh, it's a website, you can go there, check out what we've been working on. It's very colorful, very exciting, fun kind of stuff. Yeah, it's neat. 
always a work in progress so it's growing yeah always growing it and what's next for you guys just continuing that yeah hopefully doing events for that i want to yeah. i want to do some events for it and continuing relationships and i think progressing and either establishing ourselves because we had moved um I think since last season. So mm. some people know, some people haven't caught up with that. So yeah, um, that's been a really new thing for us. Yeah. So exploring the area, having fun here. And I lived in Boise. Adjusted. I lived in Boise all my life until the last like three months. So, so this is brand new for you. This is really new for me. I did. I traveled a lot before then. So I did have that, but I mean, really, you know, picking up your, your roots and moving them somewhere else is different. It's a big deal. Yeah. A big deal. I I left Canada for America, and that was that was a really big move for myself. Oh, wow. Um, as well as I spent some time in Japan before I came. Anyways, it big moves are a big deal. So I don't any Canadian accent at all? Yeah, is I'm very good. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it well, is. Congratulations. I I mean I wouldn't have guessed at all. Yeah. Thanks. Um, will you guys be open if there is indeed a season four? to do a season four yeah absolutely open to that mm -hmm. yeah and what would that journey kind of look like would it be you've moved and i know like there's a couple of nuggets that you you've put in there so you so, moved. you have this potential newness yeah possibly happening that us moving is so minuscule compared <laughs> to the fun stuff the potential story <laughs> that would be that would be revealed at that point. So now this new, okay, let me say this without having to put you on the spot. If there was a new person, mm -hmm. do you let the new person know, oh, by the way, are you open to being on TV? Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah, whenever we're dating or anything like that, um, we we talk to them about that. And that, that goes back to your question about how hard is it to, to date? Um, it's barriers of friction, multiple, you know, because right. it's like, first of all, you're dating a couple, you got to be on TV. Well, I mean, you don't have to, but it's, you know, it, it'd be kind of difficult to do. That. It's a layer. It's yeah. a layer yeah. that's there. And, 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 and there's yeah. kids. And so you have all these barriers of friction to that. So anyway, to answer your question, yes, we, we talked to them about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Good to know. Now let's go back to dating a little bit, just because I I do have a few more questions. So, um, in finding a new sister wife, are you guys open to beyond the borders, like beyond the U.S.? Do you guys look elsewhere internationally? Is that ever a thing for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we've looked at it before and and such. Like, locals fantastic because you can you can get together instantly, and then the relationship progresses quicker. But you know, online and distance has always been an option for us as well. So it's just kind of whatever comes our way at the time. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Now, if it's online, city and is it your profile or is it? you and Tasha, your profile, and then you explain your situation. And if the person's interested in your situation, then you move forward. Is that how it works? Yeah, I, I tend to do the, the approaching. Um, and if, uh, you know, if I've got a dating profile involved, um, then I will mention uh, Tasha and polygamy and that sort of thing in the profile. Um, but not uh, in the picture, just in like the words? I think we have a couple sometimes, of pictures. Uh, it, sometimes. I've, I've gone back and forth. Sometimes <laughs> it's a picture of me and Tosh together. Other times it's just me. And in the, if you read the profile, then it, it will talk about things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I tend to do the approaching. And it, it is, I guess, a little more focused on, on me in that way when it comes to uh, the outreach. Mm. But, but I always involve Tosh right mm -hmm. away with things if, if there's any progression. Yeah, he's very upfront about it. But the women are developing like a romantic relationship with him, not me. Mm -hmm. um, so always like ingraining me and everything, it gets a little weird for them, I imagine. Then I feel like I'm a hawk, like <laughs> watching over. But then, so let's say this scenario plays out. How do you deal with this? If they're developing a romantic relationship with him and it's great he likes them they like him and then you're introduced and there's no like 
chemistry in the sense that, oh, I can't see myself being friends with this girl or being a sister wife with this girl and you guys don't like each other, then what happens? Well, I think Sidia knows me well enough and we have enough core values that match that I don't think Sidian would ever find someone that I'm, I just absolutely can't jive with. Oh, okay. Because I think we match enough on the important values that he wouldn't, you know, be dating someone that doesn't match in our overall direction. But if but. if it did happen still, um, it would it would have to come down to me and Tosh talking about it. And, um, you know, I could imagine if, if the scenario was that, that I was really into this person, um, then sure, I might, I might have some hurt feelings about it or something. Mm. Um, but ultimately we both know like this person's got to work with both of us. So they, they would have to go if it, if they were going to jive with, oh. with Tosh. So this has been my question with, um, some of your other castmates as the new person. And, and I think Tasha, you, you probably can speak on it a lot, but as the new person, how hard is it to not feel like you're secondary always in the relationship because of the strong bond the initial couple yeah. has? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, I had some of those feelings coming in uh, to the relationship initially because I was the second. They had years together prior mm. to me. They had children together. Which is going to help our third. Yeah. So I think that perspective I, I understand and I I can still recall the feelings of like the concern or the worry and all of that. And does she really like me or is she just trying to like me because Sydney likes me, you know? Mm. So all of those questions, I think I've felt so intimately that I think it makes me a better sister wife in ways that I can communicate those up front of like, hey, this was my experience, it might not be yours, but if you ever have any of those worries or concerns, like you can talk to me, we can work through it. like. And, and assure you that, you know, just because City and I have a bond doesn't mean, you know, it takes time to build that too. Mm. And so I try to give City and, and a potential extra time in the beginning to be alone and have that space because I got it, but you know, yeah. it doesn't mean like you only get half ever all week. Right. <laughs> right, I think we both, we both like recognize that there's sort of a, a honeymoon phase that happens too, yeah. you know, where you get involved with somebody new and you you want to tell them all your stories and yeah. you, to, you know uh introduce them to who you are and your life and all that stuff and they want to do the same and tosh and i like she says we've already gotten uh years to be able to do that yeah. so uh we have to recognize that when a new person comes in there's gonna between both of us we're we're gonna want to have that expression mm -hmm. Uh, okay. I think we talk a lot about her and her feelings and how she's feeling, like integrating, and and so there's just a lot. Yeah. So of focus. So we make her kind of the while. focus and really kind of try to nurture her and make sure she feels supported. Okay. And how many sister wives do you feel? Is there a number, a specific number that you want to grow to? Like thirty-two or something. Thirty-two. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 38 one one for every year i, I feel like you're gonna have to buy an island so that i mean where are all these 32 sister wives going to be staying with a mansion we're gonna a mansion and we'll start with one sister wife and maybe go from there yeah we're we don't have any real plans um we've talked about that a number of times and we are open to more uh but we also feel like we really have to find out what, what it's going to be like for a long term to be with just even a third person. Mm -hmm. At that point, we can talk about things again, and, and we're going to have to talk about it with, with the third as well. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my other question. So in the plural lifestyle, I guess really there's no rules, but I'm still going to ask the question. So let's say you decide that you have a third is there, and there is that honeymoon phase, do you wait like a year or two and make sure everything is like commingled and ha happening before you even decide that there might be a fourth or a fifth? Yeah. Because we did see in your season how 
you know, two potential sister wives with other cast members just popped in at the same yeah. time and there was a lot going on, right? Yeah, we, we did. Uh, we, we talked about that scenario uh, between ourselves and we, we both agreed that we feel like for us at least that would be too much too much to handle. Um, yeah. Like we we want to spend time specifically with one person at a time. And um, yeah, I think that at least a year or two mm. of, of spending time with them. Um, and, you know, they, it's going to be another one of those like feel it out sort of situations where um, the topic will probably come up naturally because of us watching the show or just talking about whatever. And the third is going to, they're they're probably going to question us of like, well, where are you guys at? What what do you want? Where's the end? Yeah. And um, you know, we'll talk about it from there and, and see how mm -hmm. everybody feels. Now, um, we've also seen in this uh, season that many of the relationships have children involved. When do you introduce the children to like a, the the potential sister wife? Do you do it? in the dating process or do you do it after you've decided yes we're moving forward with this person let's say when things start getting serious probably. yeah so um it's it's really important that she integrates with the kids and and that neither party feels rejected because it would be awful to come in as a new wife and think the kids hate you or for the kids to feel like oh well now i'm stuck with this lady <laughs> so we it we try to wait until it's more serious because I think polygamy or plural relationships in general are just a little different. And so it's easy for people to think, oh, I can try to do this and then realize it's just not in their heart. <laughs> so I think it's just when it's a little more serious, but no, we don't have like a set date or time. It's just kind of when it seems right and she's mm -hmm. interested in focusing on the relationship with the kids. I think this and also goes back to your question about um, misconceptions with people. So, you know, we're talking here now about um, introducing this new family member and how it seems like a very special circumstance because we're polygamist, right? But it's actually not. If you look at um, how things are done, at least across the U.S. and many other countries, step parents. When, All the time. when do you introduce them? You know, how, how do you handle that stuff? Kids these, these days and, and throughout most of history have had more than two parents. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Mm -hmm. We just, we call them step parents and things mm -hmm. like that. And, uh, you know, people have been doing that forever. What we're doing here is, um, you know, arguably more healthy, possibly, if, if you look at it in terms of, we're integrating this person as, you know, a, a, a part of our unit. They're not a step something they're mm -hmm. you know not once removed or something like that they're a part of the family um so there's a lot more uh, i guess responsibility and like um uh, accountability in that situation mm -hmm. that's a you know what i didn't even think of it like that that is a fantastic we, we didn't either and you know there's a lot of these things that we've been we get grilled on these questions so much <laughs> Not, not, not to say you're giving us a third degree here or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we we get so many of these questions that over time, we we've been forced to really, really have some introspection on things. Yeah, and we've realized over time, like, wait a minute, the a lot of things people are are treating us like we're in a special situation in in a lot of things, and and a lot of the time, it's not. Um, it's it's a situation that people have played out in slightly different ways for many many years. And I think maybe like the more I talk to you guys, I think it's it's also how you perceive things, right? And I think that we are socially conditioned to see things a certain way, and anything that's outside of that is is like it shakes and rattles our beliefs. So I think that what you just said here is is good. It's good for me to get a better and broader perspective. Which brings me to your season. What I would have loved to have seen more of is, is this, answering some of the questions, because for many of us, um, it's our first introduction to the plural lifestyle, right? Yeah. And, and although we're being entertained, which is important mm -hmm. because it's a show, yeah. I think it could also be informational in the right. sense that, 
hey, as as just a regular person, and perhaps I want to know more, this is a great platform, and it's a huge platform. So I, I hope that we get to see a little bit more of that, if indeed there's going to be a fourth season. Yeah, actually, I'd really agree with you. And um, I, I think that there could be a lot more conversational, uh, de like deeper conversations uh, on, on camera that... Yeah. I, I would be much more interested in, in watching things like that. So, um, you know, you never know what uh, the producers and things might feel like is a good direction to go. But I think that our conversations here right now can can help to influence that sort of thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You guys have been fantastic and open and I appreciate your time. Um, I do want to ask you a couple of more questions before I let you go for the day. What is something that you want the viewers to know about you guys that perhaps because the season ended, uh, you didn't get across? That we didn't get across on the season. I think it's just that um, we're just kind of your average people. We don't have a lot of drama, so it wasn't super juicy for y'all, but, <laughs> but we're just kind of your normal average family that, that does things a little different with our relationship. And, you know, I don't think we always get to display those aspects because everything's so focused on the plural and the wife and the, yeah. that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. good parents and, and to back that people. up, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, to back that up, um, just going back to what, what I was just talking about, that people are, are seeing us as this special situation which in, in some cases I would agree that it, it is true that, you know, that some things that we're doing are very different, but there's a lot of those things that are really not. And that if you take a little bit of time to zoom out and think about things a bit, that, that you'll, you'll see that. Mm -hmm. well, I guess one more thing is I don't think all, so many viewers think women are brainwashed into this lifestyle. And I spoke to almost all the other cast members and these women are empowered women, they're educated, they know what they're doing and choosing for themselves. So I don't think and what does it say they're about, bullied into the lifestyle at least. What does it say about these people, the people who say that, their views of women to think that they're so... Um, weak. E weak. Yeah, weak and, and, yeah. and easily manipulated and, and all that. Um, I, I don't think that, that that speaks to to female empowerment at all. Right. So. I think that the question, and it, it, it's not my question, but I will address it since we're talking about it. Uh, I think that a lot of the viewers couldn't understand why. So there's a couple of things, there's a couple of layers. So the first thing is I think they couldn't understand why it seemed that the man was able to have um, right. multiples and the wife was not able to have multiples, right? But then right. we've talked about that and I think we've explained it. If you, if you look at it just like, oh, this is a sexual thing, then you can only see it that way. Yeah. But if you expand your mind, then it's not about, oh, it's this or that. Because in my research, there are people that have multiple husbands and there are mm -hmm. people that, I, I didn't write it down, but it's like, don't you guys don't kill me because I didn't write it down. But what I'm thinking from my mind is like bi poly or something it's called where. Yeah, I think it's something like that. And there's like polyandry too, if you're like the more traditional marriage oriented. But yeah, I think bi poly or there's there's so many subsets to be right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the part that I think that was not discussed. This is like one part of the plural lifestyle, but there are different variations. Right. I almost look at it like a tree. Yeah, and so uh, to to back that up, um, the the people who are kind of making criticisms about that and like, you know, why do we have our our relation set set up like this? Well, why do you have your relation set up how you do? Because you prefer it that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's like asking you know a gay couple, well, why do you have to be gay? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. So yeah. why, why would you ask that? It, the answer is obvious. It's what they prefer. So this is what we prefer. Yes, we know that there are many other ways to have relationships. We, uh, just because of our own psychology, our feelings, how we were raised, influences and stuff, because of all those things, mm -hmm. it's come together in such a way that we happen to prefer this particular kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. So... It doesn't matter how many people 
say that, you know, they think it's patriarchal or abusive and manipulative and why don't you do this and that and all that kind of stuff. We're, this is what we like. So Works that's what we're going to do. Right. And I think at the end of the day, it, it's about what makes you happy, right? So yeah. if you're, if everyone is happy and healthy and thriving in their relationships, whatever that relationship looks like, then that's what it should be, right? Yeah. Yep. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we are hoping to see more of Seeking Sister Wives season four. And where can they find you guys uh, social media wise if they so choose to? Yeah, so I'm Tasha Jones.me on pretty much all the social platforms. And then City and yours is City and MS Jones on most of them. Yeah, I mean, if you look up City and MS Jones, that pretty much every social platform that's is him. that's yeah. the name that I use. So perfect, perfect. Me. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we hope to see more of you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been thank fun. you so much. It's been great.